Hey, kiddos, it's Bonus Dad. I've been joining uh, Bonus Mom on her TikTok live streams and reading uh, stories that I loved as a child uh, about an old rabbit gentleman named Uncle Wiggily Long Ears. And I read these to our two boys when they were little, and they loved them too. And uh, these were written by Howard Roger Garris. Uh, between 1910 and 1947, he wrote thousands of them. He was a newspaper man in Newark, New Jersey, and uh, he and his wife both wrote children's uh, stories and children's books, um, sometimes under pen names. But uh, this is Uncle Wiggily Longears. Now, this book is written by or uh, produced by a company called Scholar Select. Uh, published by Andesite Press, and it says this work has been selected by scholars as being culturally important and is part of the knowledge base of civilization as we know it. It was produced from the ori original artifact and remains as true to the original work as possible. So there, um, this is a, 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 he wrote a number of these books or had the, uh, had the stories put into a number of collections in books. So I'm going to read these for you. Um, you can also, I'm going to start with chapter five in this book, but you can uh, catch the first four chapters on podcast on Bonus Mom's Tavern. All right. This is chapter five, Uncle Wiggily on a Desert Island. Uncle Wiggily and Grandfather Goosey did not sleep very well the rest of the night after they were shipwrecked. I guess you wouldn't either. For you see, they could not tell where they were, whether on a rock in the middle of the ocean, or on a sand bank, or in a savings bank, or where. For the moon had gone to bed, having stayed up as long as the man in it would allow, and the night was quite dark. <clears throat> well, we can tell in the morning where we are, spoke the old rabbit gentleman, after looking through the bottle telescope and trying to make out what it was the ship had struck. Can't you see anything? asked Grandpa Goosey. Well, it looks like a uh, looks to me like a big stick of black licorice candy that we hit, answered the rabbit. But I know it can't be that. Oops, let me get the page turned here. <clears throat> so they had to wait as best they could until morning, and when the sun crawled out of bed and began climbing up the slippery sides of the sky, then they could see where they were and what they had struck. And what do you think it was? Why, nothing else but a desert island. Yes, they were shipwrecked on a desert island. You know what that is, I suppose, but in case you do not, I'll tell you anyhow. A desert island, you see, is an island in the duck pond ocean where nothing grows. I mean nothing to eat. Of course, there are many trees and sand and grass and things like that, but no ham sandwiches or chicken salad or ice cream or chocolate sodas or lollipops or anything like that. Goodness, no. If a desert island had those things on it, why, it wouldn't be a desert island at all. And I couldn't write this story. Well, we were up against it, spoke Uncle Wiggily sadly, and that wasn't slang, you know. Up against what? asked Grandpa Goosey. The desert island, said the rabbit gentleman. The edge of our ship is right close against the island. We can't get off, for we are stuck in the sand, and I guess our voyage is over. What's to be done? inquired the goose gentleman, sadly like. We must go ashore on the island and live there, said Uncle Wiggily. But there is nothing to eat observed Grandpa Goosey. Nothing at all. We had much better stay here on our ship. We have enough here to last us for some time, and after that is gone, one may come along, someone may come along and rescue us. No, we must go on the desert island, insisted Uncle Wiggily firmly. Why, all shipwrecked sailors have to go ashore on the desert island when they hit it. Otherwise, what would be the sense of being shipwrecked? Well, I suppose you are right, admitted Grandpa Goosey with a sigh. We'll go ashore and starve to death, but it does seem a foolish thing to do in my private opinion. Never mind, it must be done, went on Uncle Wiggily. 
So he gave a big jump, and leaping over the deck railing of the ship, he landed on the island. Then Grandpa Goosey flapped his wings, and he too soon stood beside his friend. Well, what next? asked Grandpa Goosey, after he'd pulled a splinter out of his foot with his bill. What next? We must walk all around the desert island, Uncle Wiggily, and see what is on it. We don't need to walk, spoke Grandpa Goosey, for I can stand here and see everything. There's nothing on this island but trees and grass. I can see that plainly from here. You never can tell, went on Uncle Wiggily. There may be lions and tigers and snakes and elephants and all sorts of wild animals and men here on this island. If there are, we must see them. So when we are saved, we can write a book about them. I don't see any good of that, spoke Grandpa Goosey. If there are wild animals here, I don't want to see them. I'd much rather they didn't see me, too, for they might eat me up. Let's go hide. No, said Uncle Wiggily. We must walk all around the island. That's called exploring it. Come along. We'll explore. So together they walked along, and pretty soon they got hungry, also thirsty, for a desert island is very dry, you know. Oh, dear quacked Grandpa Goosey. I wish I had something to eat and drink. I wish we had stayed on the ship. That is no way to talk, objected Uncle Wiggily. Of course you have to be hungry and thirsty. You can't be shipwrecked on a desert island, island unless you are hungry. That's part of the game. Still spoke the poor old goose gentleman. It seems hard to starve and be thirsty when we have plenty to eat on our ship that is so close by us. But if we have to, why we have to, I suppose. Hello, he suddenly exclaimed. Look there. What is it? asked Uncle Wiggily, curious like. I just saw a monkey, answered Grandpa Goosey in a whisper. A monkey? Yes, a real live monkey. Come on. And the goose gentleman and the gentleman goose waddled as fast as he could. Where are you going? asked Uncle Wiggily. To get some coconuts was the answer. Coconuts? I thought you said you saw a monkey, spoke the old rabbit gentleman, flustered like. So I did, went on Grandpa Goosey, but don't you know that wherever there are monkeys, there are coconuts? There have to be, just as you have to be shipwrecked on a desert island. On every package of coconut to put on cakes, there are pictures of monkeys, and that shows you that there are coconuts here. See? Monkeys, coconuts, coconuts, monkeys. Hooray, we shan't starve now, for we can eat coconuts and drink the milk in them. Maybe you're right, slowly admitted Uncle Wiggily. Come on. Off they hurried, and soon they came to where a monkey was sitting in a tree, curling his tail with the fire tongs. Throw something at him, whispered Grandpa Goosey to Uncle Wiggily. Won't that make him mad? asked the rabbit in a whisper. No, that's what everyone does when they want a monkey to toss them a coconut, answered Grandpa Goosey. They throw something up in the tree at him, and the monkey always throws back coconuts down. Throw something. So Uncle Wiggily threw a little stone at the monkey, taking care not to hit him. The monkey looked down and stopped curling his tail and exclaimed, Oh, you're here, are you? I was expecting you. Then he threw down two fine, large, juicy coconuts which the rabbit gentleman and Grandpa Goosey cracked open at once. And then they sat down under the shady tree and drank the coconut milk, and they thought that, after all, being shipwrecked wasn't so bad. But no more for tonight, if you please, though in case the peanut pie doesn't slide down the front stairs and splash all over the baby carriage wheels so they can't go roller skating, the next chapter will be about Uncle Wiggily and the Coconut Monkey. And that's it for this story for today. These are stories for kiddos of all ages. And it's been my pleasure to share this one with you today.